Hey guys, welcome back to Coming Home to Autism. I know a lot of you are at the beginning of this journey and you are either waiting a diagnosis or you've received a diagnosis and then you kind of go through the crying phase and the denial phase and the right I need to do something phase and you're probably googling and YouTubing and doing everything you can to try and find answers and help for your children and it can be really totally overwhelming and you wonder is your child ever going to speak are they ever going to tell you they love you that's always really hard to say I love you I'm already going to start crying I haven't even started the <laughs> I haven't even started yet but I wanted to come on here today to reassure you that everything's going to be okay and I wanted to run through some of Dylan's milestones Dylan was born full term 42 weeks in fact healthy birth Everything was great. Uh, did I notice anything before then? No. Did I notice anything before a year? Not really, no. Uh, did I notice anything at 13 months? Not really, no. Um, maybe because I'd never had a child before, I didn't really know what to expect, but I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. There were no signs. There were no, ooh, that's weird, or that's not right. It was only really when he got to about 15, 14, 15, 16 months old, that I noticed he started to withdraw. He was saying a few words and those words stopped. He then had no eye contact, he didn't hear me. Um, again, I, I talk about the whole diagnosis process in my earlier video, but there were no real milestones before then that he didn't meet. Once he was diagnosed, I, I was sitting where you were, you know, frantically looked for everything, did everything I could do to help him. I then started to look for a specialist nursery because everything I read was early intervention, early intervention, early intervention. And this can also be really panicky because you're going, okay, there's a waiting list to get into the specialist nursery and, and I need to wait for this, and I need to wait for that. It's okay, it's not like a ticking time bomb. Yes, early intervention is good, but I'm guessing your child's already been diagnosed and they're under the age of four. If they're older, please don't worry, you still have time. It's not like nothing can be done because our brains are always learning and always evolving. So don't panic too much. But Dylan did get put into a specialist nursery at first. So we did a lot of speech and language therapy, a lot of occupational therapy. We um, did a lot of play therapy and I really love play therapy because I could do play therapy with him, you know? Ask the therapist, watch and observe them. I remember sitting there writing notes, being like, right, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to do this, and I would apply them at home. It is a lot of hard work, but it does pay off in the end. Dylan was nonverbal until probably about four. Then he started trying to say more words. Before he started saying words though, he would come and take my hand to bring me places. And this is the first sign of communication. You know, if your child is communicating you with you in any way, this is really reassuring. You know, they might not say, hey mom, can you pass me the remote? But they might take you to go and get something or they might look at you and look at something else. This is all part of communication. Communication isn't just verbal. So really look for your child's cues because they might not be obvious. They might not be, hey, look at me. but Look at the little subtle clues that your child's giving you and jump on that, react to that. When Dylan did start saying words, of course, it was very exciting. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Dylan. Hi to you. I need this apple. Uh-oh, they're too big. I was probably the only one who could really understand him, that and the speech therapist. So he did have um, quite a pronounced lisp and quite illegible, really. Um, but I've, I found this very cute though. With the early intervention as well, they kind of teach social cues, you know, how to kind of make friends. And, and I was always, I was always saying to them, you know, you'd be polite, like say hello to people, because I knew that he, his natural reaction was to kind of stand back and, and hide behind me. But we kind of made it a game. It was like, say hi to everybody, you know, like, hey everyone, how are you? Say hello to body. Hello. And it would be so sad if they didn't say hello. I'd be like, please say hello to my son. <laughs> oh, things we do. 
but yeah he didn't really um, start making any sense so he was about five or six and then his words came really quickly thanks mom <laughs> you're welcome you stole my party seven Ooh, what's that it says birthday boy oh birthday that 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 why that. not they get tummy egg why this can't one. why can't you eat it because you get tummy ache. Why does it give you a tummy ache? Gluten. Because it's got gluten in it. So back to Dylan's milestones. Dylan was in nappies until he was five. In fact, next week's episode is the long awaited for potty training one. He was in nappies till he was four or five. And I just didn't care about other people's judgment really. We did it in his terms when he was ready. Again, watch next week and you'll learn all about what I did for that. I potty trained him the same time I potty trained Luca, which worked out really well because he would watch what Luca was doing. So that helped. But Dylan still needs a bit of help cleaning after he's done a poo now, but that's fine. We're, we're working towards independence on that. Brushing teeth is another one. Don't stress out too much. I know they always say, you know, you need to brush your child's teeth from the minute they get those little white pearlies sticking through. Well, I've spoken to a lot of dentists and they have reassured me that as long as they're not eating sugar and loads of fruit juice, that their baby teeth will be okay. Now, if you can try and get a toothbrush around, great. But if it means your child is getting anxious and upset, don't do it, especially not before bedtime because bedtime should be as calm as possible. So if you brush their teeth first thing in the morning, great do it then make up your own rules honestly we have to to make our lives easier to make our children's lives easier to reduce anxieties there's a great toothpaste that we use it's called aura nurse it's non-foaming and has no taste at all but it does have the right amount of fluoride that your child needs for healthy teeth in it and it is recommended by dentists and my dentist gave me that with toothbrushes there are a number of toothbrushes available on amazon i always go to amazon you can buy them on specialist sensory direct or autism websites, but with anything, you mention autism and they up the price. So there are specialist toothbrushes I got from Amazon. It's like three sides. I did get one of those for Dylan, but he just ended up by chewing it. And in fact, I put it in his mouth and he just chomped down and I couldn't move the thing at all. So that didn't work for us, but it might work for you. What did work for us when, obviously when Dylan's teeth started to fall out and his um, adult teeth started to come through, adult teeth, big teeth, whatever you want to call them, we, I did up the ante and I did try and explain to him because you could kind of understand a bit more that we had to brush his teeth to make sure we didn't want them to get yellow. When they did start to get a bit yellow, he then went, oh, I don't like that. And I was like, okay, well, this is what we have to do. So when they're little, don't stress out too much. When they get older, the understanding comes in a bit more. And then we introduced an electric toothbrush. So Dylan, again, sensory, loves an electric toothbrush. He loves the feeling on his mouth. So maybe for your little ones that you can get baby electric toothbrushes, maybe they might like that feeling. And then they also like, if they hold it, they kind of like that feeling of shaking. So that's also a, a good thing to try and you can get them quite inexpensively now from most major drugstores or Amazon. As we're on the subject of self-care, let's talk about the hair. So Dylan, hated getting his hair cut. Now I'm lucky his hair grows quite slowly, but I've had a number of occasions where I've been like a monkey wrapped around him, holding him as the poor haircut lady is trying to cut his hair. So a few tips on how to ease anxieties around haircuts. Go to the hairdressers beforehand, show them around, go out again. Maybe they get lollipop when they're in there so they have a good association with the place. The next thing is phone up and say, can I come in before anyone else is here? Because the last thing you want to do is sit down with your child to get a haircut and there's hair dryers going off and there's people chatting next door and people drinking tea, disaster. So ask if you can go before it opens or before it closes or at a really quiet time. So we've made friends with our hairdresser here and we go when there's no one else and Dylan thinks he owns the place really now. The other thing is they have long hair. Long hair is rocking it right now. Just saying, might be easier. Making friends, Dylan always wanted to make friends, but he just didn't really know how. So we had sort of structured play dates as early as three or four. I would find, I would ask a teacher, I would kind of like, basically you know, like, can you say dating for kids? Are you allowed to say that? <laughs> I kind of was like searching out a kid that was, you know, he looks nice, you could be friends with him, you know, 
kind of checking out the playground. <laughs> and then I would like corner the mum as I did for Ian, and was like, oh, hi, you know, I'm Dylan's mom. Do you want a play date? Go hunt for that kid that might get on with your kid. Maybe they're quiet. Find another quiet child. Then do activities they like together. This will help them bond. Even if you think it's not working well at all, it will eventually click. And it's nice for them. And I could see Dylan, you know, when he was six or seven, how important that friendship was to him to feel like he had a, to feel like he had a body, to feel like he had a somebody. Oh, everyone needs somebody to love. Okay, <laughs> so when it comes to family, when it comes to cousins and family gatherings and you know, what is Dylan like with them? Well, I'm very lucky that Dylan has a very good relationship with my parents and my brother and my sisters. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> you know, but you do have to constantly remind them, you know, kind of give them their space, let them come to you, talk about something they really like, build up that bond slowly, you know, because he does really love seeing them. He doesn't always give them the reaction that they want, you know, sometimes he'll hug them and sometimes he won't, but I think they've pretty much learned to now kind of come to terms with that. But it's important to educate your family as well on your child and what they like, their wants, their needs, and also, you know, try and leave your child with them for five, 10 minutes. You know, I, I do that quite regularly. In fact, my Maybe that's why my brother and sisters have stopped coming around because every time they come around, I leave them with the kids. Bye, I'm out of here. Dylan's relationship with his brother and his sister, you know, I would say he's hitting all the milestones there. I mean, they fight, they love each other, they argue. And as much as the arguing sometimes drives me demented, part of me is like, that's a normal sibling relationship, right? We've, we all have an annoying little brother or annoying sister. And I kind of love it when they do annoy Dylan and he reacts just perfectly. But no, it's it's important and I, I do love that friendship that they have. So I hope this has helped ease some of your fears. I hope this has helped you to be able to take a deep breath and not worry too much. And every child is going to develop at their own rate. You know, your child might not talk till seven, eight. Maybe they'll talk at one. You know, it's every child is different. And all you can do is just remember that they do love you, even if they can't tell you right now, but they do. And be kind to yourself as well, because you are doing an incredible job. And thank you so much for watching once again, and we'll see you next week.